Hello and welcome to Mad About Superheroes Marvel Comics review of The Punisher Warzone number one. We're starting off here with a great cover by John Romita Jr. This was this comic came out in the early 90s during the speculator boom, so there was a lot of gimmick covers. This one has what's called the die cut cover, it has this little cut here in the middle. I don't know, really know what that's supposed to be, but you can see the, uh, the Punisher skull behind it, which is kind of cool. Lots of uh, shell casings there from the bullets. Looks really nice. Great uh, angry face of the Punisher. I think John Romita Jr. is one of the best Punisher artists. Uh, probably right up there with um, Mike Zek, in my opinion. Great cover, great stuff. And we also have a little gimmick here on the inside, too. With uh, this great shot of uh, the Punisher here. That's classic logo there. Shooting up some bad guys. The Punish is all about taking out the trash. And uh, just real uh, eye candy. You know, the art is, is spectacular. Uh, I think John Romita Jr. here at the, um, the height of his powers. And this splash page here uh, kind of sets the scene. Uh, you know, we got bad guy, uh, uh, one cop down. He's got one cop hostage. And great shot of the Punisher in the dark there with the skull underneath that long trench coat. I think this is probably the first time where uh, you see him in, a, in the long coat like that, which they uh, later mimicked or replicated in the movies. Like there was a movie, a Punisher War Zone, that was you know, named after, obviously, this comic book. It's kind of cool. And the Punisher takes a shot, and uh, he kind of wings the, uh, the officer, but he gets that middle shot on the, on the bad guy there. And uh, gritty stuff here, you know, kids watching from behind a, you know, a cracked open door. I don't think that the movies or uh, even the Punisher television series, uh, the Netflix series, got as gritty as some of the comic books did. He's got this great, um, John Romita Jr. is great at drawing realistic guns. A lot of comic book artists, uh, uh, especially at this time, would just kind of fake it. But now John Romita Jr., he's got that Uzi in the shot there and pointed right in this guy's face. Uh, a junkie, he's kind of sweating here. Not only from uh, probably, uh, you know, the junk, whatever he's doing, but, uh, you know, that Uzi in his face <laughs> and the Punisher's cold stare. And uh, rightfully so to be afraid because look at that great two-page spread there of uh, the Punisher uh, taking a shot. No mercy. That's what the Punisher's all about. A lot of, uh, you know, um, the movies or even the, uh, the television series that I mentioned, uh, they try to soften the character out, but... Uh, not these comic books, man. So that's a great shot. I prolong it there for the beautiful artwork from John Romita Jr. The, uh, the issue here is written by, uh, by Chuck Dixon, who had a long history with the Punisher character. He also wrote for um, Mark Spector Moon Knight uh, in the uh, late uh, 80s. Uh, Moon Knight's all the rage now. Again, another uh, television series on Disney+. Plus. Everybody's talking about. But, uh, and then we have here, um, the cop that he winged, you know, the Punisher is a, a vigilante, so he's, he's technically a criminal, um, and, uh, she's, you know, draws her gun on him, and, uh, he just tells her, you know, do what you gotta do, but of course she doesn't take the shot, because even though he winged her, he saved her life, right? So, now we got some, uh, some great character stuff here between, uh, Punisher and his, uh, his intel guy, his partner, uh, Micro, and uh, Micro thinks that uh, that uh, maybe the Punisher is going a little too far these days, or whatever. So they're kind of having like a, a little spat here, and Micro kind of walks out on him, you know, kind of pissed off, and uh, the Punisher follows him because for some reason, uh, you know, he's a little paranoid. He doesn't trust him. He thinks that uh, something's off with Micro, and here he's kind of sneaking around, and he's making sure uh, that he's not followed. So he's kind of, when the doors of this train is about to close, he kind of jumps in. So he's doing everything he can to make sure that he's not being watched or followed. But he is, you know. And uh, Frank Castle, the Punisher, is not an easy guy to, to give the slip to. He's very determined, so he jumps onto the back of the train and he, you know, sticks with him. And he kind of notices, he's kind of, uh, you know, watching him through some binoculars. And he sees him talking to somebody here and uh, he's already suspicious, and this uh, this uh, confirms, kind of confirms his suspicions. 
uh, he sees him talking to somebody, and whoever he's talking to has a tape recorder. So he's not a very happy Punisher. Not that he ever was. <laughs> he's not a happy guy. That's not the character. And then when you know he goes back to their uh, their little hideout here, and uh, he's waiting for Micro in the dark. And great you know imagery here of uh, that skull you know sticking out in the dark because the rest of his 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 uniform is all black, right? So it's great imagery here. And they're kind of having a little argument where Punisher's kind of questioning him where, where he's been, what he's been up to, who's he talking to. And uh, it turns out the big reveal is that he's not like uh, turning on the Punisher or turning him in, like talking to cops or feds or whatever. It just turns out to be a psychiatrist. And the one the thing that, that have, they have in common that kind of brought the two characters together is that they both lost people um, you know, to criminals, to crime. And that's why they've teamed up and they're doing this thing together. But Micro's kind of had it now and walks out on him because, uh, you know, Frank doesn't trust him, um, you know. And uh, so the Punisher gets pissed off and he does his his Rambo thing here and starts shooting up the place. <laughs> He's pissed off. And then we got some setup here for some villain stuff and a new character that they're introducing. You can kind of see the boots over here, I think. And it uh, turns out to be a new character created by John Romita Jr., this guy here, Shotgun, he actually makes appearances uh, in Daredevil comics that John Romita Jr. also illustrates, which is cool. And uh, it turns out, I think, that setting him up to go against the Punisher, but if I remember right, as the story arc goes, they wind up teaming up together. You know, which happens a lot in comic books. So. And now we're back to Punisher stuff, and uh, we're going to have a little showdown in Chinatown here, which is great. With these guys, they're doing a robbery. And, of course, they're not going to get very far because the Punisher's on the scene. And, again, great shot, and John Romita Jr. doesn't fake it with the guns. You know, I know the Uzi. I'm not sure what that one is there, but um, it's very accurate. Shooting up the scene. And uh, he gets this, this gangster here, this mobster guy uh, named Mickey, and he's trying to get information out of him. So he takes him back to his, uh, to his little hideout. And he's got him hanging upside down here. Again, great imagery with the Punisher in the dark. The use of that, that skull. Can't do that enough. Maybe I'm easy to please, but I like it. And uh, we're going to have a little torture tactics here. He's going to torture him to get information. And uh, he's got the little... Uh, some Do some spot welding on Mickey over here. <laughs> and uh, he's freaking out. And, uh, you know, that he's going to basically uh, use that to uh, on his back, you know, go through his skin and whatever, and he's freaking out. But uh, that's not really the, the torch that he had in his hand. So what's that thing? And it turns out that he, he freaks him out, you know, to give up some intel. And it turns out that it was an ice pop. Because the way he described it to him, like his flesh burning or whatever, that, that it would be similar to that. That's how it would feel at first. But uh, that, this is actually a scene that they, they uh, cherry-picked for um, the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. They do the exact same thing. So that's pretty cool. And then we have here, uh, the Punisher is basically going to go uh, undercover and infiltrate the Mafia. And uh, Mickey is going to set him up. He's going to vouch for him. And he takes on this uh, identity of uh, Johnny Tower. He's got the little cross. He's got a little pony nub back there. You can't see it, but it, it plays out in, in the issues after this. But that's pretty much the issue. And uh, thanks for uh, going through it with me. And as always, thanks for letting your geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give a like and comment down below. We'll catch you on the next one.